During the 27 years that Nelson Mandela spent behind apartheid's bars, the outside world knew very little about him or even how his physical appearance had changed over time. Even after his release, he revealed comparatively little about his innermost thoughts during his time as a prisoner. But this is now set to change. Madiba's prison letters have been released as a book and Kriya went to learn more. When Nelson Mandela married Winnie Madikizela in 1958, he was already on trial for treason. Although found not guilty and released, he was forced to leave his family and go underground. In 1962, he was rearrested and stood trial once more, eventually being condemned to life imprisonment. For the next 11 years on Robben Island, contact with the outside world was limited to one visit and one letter every six months. And these restrictions were only eased a little in 1975. Despite the hardships, he exchanged letters through the official channels and by secret means. A selection of these writings has been compiled by a former journalist and now senior researcher at the Nelson Mandela Foundation, Sam Fenter. Sam, you were part of putting together the prison letters of Nelson Mandela. What made you want to be part of this project? I was very lucky in that I was given carte blanche to choose whatever letters I wanted. Obviously, there's only 255 letters in the book, but I wanted the book to tell the story of his imprisonment and of a period in South Africa that we all should remember. This book is 99% his words, written at the time as it was all happening. What is one of your favorite letters from this book? A letter he wrote in 1969 to the Minister of Justice, a very long letter laying out why he thought him and his comrades should be released from prison and if not released, why they should be classified as political prisoners. It's him taking charge and him speaking to a government minister as an equal in a very authoritative way. What is one of the lessons you'd like people to take after reading this book? I think that this book is a slice of South African history and especially young people can learn a lot about what it was really like for people who stood up against apartheid and how they suffered and how they also rose above that suffering to bring us the kind of democracy that we have today. His later years are richly recorded by artifacts and images which show how accessible he remained to people from all walks of life and from all over the world. His decades in prison had been a different matter with letters providing his only contact with his family, including his granddaughter Zamaswazi Lamini Mandela, who had to grow up without the personal presence of a famous grandfather. It is an absolute honor to be chatting to you and getting to know the Mandela family a little bit better. Tell me, what was it like growing up? I grew up with my grandmother and my, my mom always made sure that his memory was very much alive in our home and in our lives and she always spoke about the sacrifice that he was making. That's why we don't have a grandfather around. And how she kind of made up for it was like she made sure we spent a lot of time with my grandmother. So my grandmother was a big part of my life growing up. I actually really only got to spend time with him once he got out of prison. What made you go into creating this publication? I published my grandmother's prison journal, 491 Days. So for me, it was a natural sort of progression to kind of work on my grandfather's. And I think it's such an important piece of work because it's a full account and a detailed account and a personal account of what he experienced and what he went through that people can actually read and study. What are some of the content of those letters? The hardest ones for me to get through were letters to like my mom and letters to my gran and to his family and to his friends. Trying to conduct a family life from prison. So trying to support my grandmother, trying to be a father to his children, trying to provide for his children, trying to provide for my grandmother from prison. And also just trying to advise family on family issues and family matters. It's like a family dynamic that's happening, but it's playing out from like a prison, behind a prison wall. And so it's very interesting to kind of just see how he was able to be there for his family or try to be there for his family even though he physically couldn't. What is the message that you would give to the youth? I think it's important for the youth of South Africa to not forget where we came from. And I think it's important for them to take it upon themselves to understand our history. I think that too often our freedom is taken for granted and that people don't understand the sacrifices that people like my grandfather, my grandmother, and many others made for us to enjoy the freedoms that we have. In the centenary year of his birth, the face of Nelson Prolishlashla Mandela is instantly recognizable, so it's easy to forget that he was kept faceless for almost a quarter of his life. 
his letters go some way to filling this gap in his life story, while also revealing more about the human being behind the icon.